morning and welcome to our Sunday morning celebration. May God's peace and joy be with you as we gather around God's word. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may join in singing at home if you wish, number 179 from the hymn book, Christ Alone is Our Salvation. We now come together before God and confess our sins in the presence of God and of each other. Let us pray. We confess to you, Almighty God, before the whole company of heaven and to each other, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed by our own fault. Have mercy on us for Jesus' sake. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to eternal life. Amen. God has had mercy on us. He loves us and has given his son to die for us. So by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 93. All our readings today talk about God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit as King. As you read through this psalm, note how the King of Kings is described. We read it responsively. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord is high, is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Almighty and ever-living God, it is your will to restore all things in your dear Son, bring together under his just and gentle rule all the peoples of the world now divided and torn apart by sin. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear the readings for today. Today is the last Sunday in the church year. Next Sunday is the first, season, first Sunday of Advent, beginning a new church year. The first reading for today is from Daniel chapter 7, reading from verse 9. A vision of God surrounded by his court. As I looked, thrones were set in place. And the Ancient of Days took his seat. His cloth was, clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire and its wheels were ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 4. Christ is coming on the clouds. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness, 
the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom of priests, to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, reading from verse 33. Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. Pilate went back into the palace and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you've done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith now together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may join in singing at home the hymn number 147, O Morning Star. We begin our time of meditation in prayer. Heavenly Father, please guide us as we reflect on your word and listen to your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I want to look at all three Bible readings um, that we heard a moment ago Look at them very briefly and draw some important links between them. This is important because in the first and second reading we hear from the prophet Daniel and then from the book of Revelation. And the information that's presented us there is, is it can be a little bit strange to our ears, a little bit confronting at times. We are fast approaching the end of another church year and the end of another year. 2021. How many days are left before the beginning of the new year? Approximately 36 or something like that, I think. So what comes first? Endings or beginnings? Good question, isn't it? It's one of those chicken and the egg questions. In many ways, you can't have a beginning without an ending and you can't have an ending without a beginning how about that so talking about endings and beginnings there's only six days to the end of the church year and the season of advent is just around the corner that beautiful season of preparation for the celebration of the birth of jesus so as we end one church year and about to begin another, I want to present three pictures to you. They'll come up on the screen beside me. 
using these three pictures as symbols, we listen to God's word and to see which of these three we might belong or relate best to. There's a bank, um, there's the scales and the, the hammer which represent a court of law and then there's that figure going from the past to the future which I've tried to represent as a, an agency of change, progression, improving, improving the world we live in. So in our first reading from Daniel, amazing words. What Daniel is trying to describe here is beyond human description. I kind of think an easy way to understand what Daniel's trying to do is, you know, when you've had a dream, one of those really amazing dreams that just seem to be everywhere and do everything and are so, you know, confusing. And then if you were asked to write that dream down, legibly, so that people could sort of grasp what you'd seen in your dream... I think Daniel's vision, you know, it's, it begins to be a bit like that. Here Daniel's describing God the Father in heaven. The ancient of days, clothing as white as snow, hair like pure wool, throne like fiery flames. All these are symbols of God's power and authority and eternity in heaven and we can't fully grasp exactly what it's like. But then things get a little bit more real and a bit more down to earth for us. Daniel says in the last part of verse 10 in our reading, the court was seated and the books were opened. This is the setting, this is setting of the scene. Then Daniel continues and he says, in my vision at night I looked and there before me was one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. Here's a clue as to understanding the three pictures I showed you a moment ago. As Christians, and specifically as Lutherans, we have a very clear understanding of how God works in our lives and how we, as part of God's children, respond to God's loving actions in our lives. It is very easy to see God in heaven as managing some kind of reform or agency in this world. The Ancient of Days mentioned to David, sitting there directing different um, organisations around the world, after all, the world's in quite a mess and in need of reform in many different places. And when we look at the history of the Christian church, what do we see? We see the church down through the centuries, the Christian church down through the centuries, doing just that. Working to change things for the better. That's been a big part of the impact of the Christian church and the Christian faith all around the world. From hospitals to health care to education for people in third world countries to providing a place for the least and the rejected in the community. Look at the work of our own Lutheran World Service, for example, and the impact that has made over so many years. But if we just see the church as an organisation for reform and change for the better, then I think we're missing the mark. What we will end up with is a church where all the work and all the effort and all the brains and all, the, all that depends entirely on us. Our hard work, our money, our good intentions and so on. And as we know, our good works, our good intentions, our best efforts never quite come up to scratch. God demands perfection, and we will never achieve that. So, maybe God's the CEO of a big bank. <laughs> you know, God, the Ancient of Days, sits in the boardroom, uh, 
I have images in my head going around of, you know that scene in Mary Poppins? <laughs> For those of you who remember Mary Poppins, remember those old grey-haired men in the boardroom of that bank, sitting in a dark room, all very sombre and serious, managing the affairs of the bank? Does God have all these treasures locked up securely and we have to kind of make our regular contribution, our regular deposit of good deeds just to earn some interest and some favour back? Let's listen again to the words of Daniel. The court was seated and the books were opened. In my vision I looked and there before me was one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. Let's also listen now to the reading from Revelation, Revelation chapter 1. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom of priests, to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power for ever and ever. Here we get a clue to that final picture that I haven't mentioned yet that I put up at the beginning the picture of the scales and the, the hammer representing the court of law. In the words from Daniel, we heard the court was seated and the books were opened. And then we were told that one like the Son of Man was brought before the court. The Son of Man is a common name in the Bible for Jesus. Jesus comes before the court. Jesus appears before the Ancient of Days. Why? He appears in our place. The words from Revelation that we heard tell us what Jesus has done for us. He has loved us and freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father to him be glory and power for ever and ever. This is what's happening in our gospel reading for today. Jesus is standing before a human court, before Pilate to be judged and sentenced to death. Why? For us, for our guilt, for our sin. He stands in our place so that we can be forgiven and made new, set apart and become part of God's eternal family. Yes, in God's strength and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be agents of change for the good in this world. And God moves us to work, to serve and love those around us, shining the light of God's grace and love into other people's lives. And yes, God has an inexhaustible store in heaven of grace and forgiveness and love for all of us, for all people, through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, our risen Lord and Saviour. Just like the two loaves and the five fish that Jesus fed over 5,000 people with, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. We find it hard to believe, don't we? because we live in a world of diminishing resources. But God's resources never run out. But best of all, as we come to the end of one year and as we begin another, we live lives forgiven and made new, all because of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the year that is about to be passed and the new year that is about to begin. We thank you that we can live in the grace, love and eternal life given to us freely through Jesus our Lord and Saviour. In his name we pray. Amen.
The hymn I've chosen at this point in our, in our worship, if you want to sing at home, is from the hymn book, number 494, Jerusalem the Golden. We now join in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Saviour and Judge Eternal, thank you for including us in your new creation through baptism and for crossing us from death to life by your own death and resurrection. Build up our confidence in you so that we have no fear of Judgment Day, but rather rejoice in the new and perfect life you have in store for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Build up your church so that it never ceases to preach the gospel in all its parts. Preserve us from modern scepticism and give us courage to witness to the truth of your coming judgment. So build up and preserve our bishop and district bishop and all the pastors and teachers of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, who always has been and always will be, show this world that your judgment is real and that it is matched by your forgiving grace through faith in you and your word. Open the eyes of those who use violence and sabotage as tools of change to the error of their ways. Have mercy on all who do wrong and turn them to you in repentance and in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Defend those who are suffering from the wrongdoing of others, dear Lord. Restore their losses. Build up the courts of our land so that judgments are true and fair. Remind our judiciary and police force that as they serve you, they serve you as an eternal judge of all. And turn all people to gladly obey the laws of the land in obedience to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy, Lord, on the sick and the suffering. Give healing and relief so that you may be praised. Provide for those we know personally to be in want and in whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for all who rejoice in the hope of eternal life through your blood and who are now with you in glory. Build us up when danger and death approach and let our lives here on earth end in peace and quietness as we leave to see you face to face. All this and for whatever else we should ask, we pray in your holy name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. For our final singing, if you wish at home, Two songs from the supplement, the hymn book supplement, number 800, May We Be One, and number 880, How Shall I Call You? Thank you for joining me again today. I pray God's richest blessing on all of you. This service, this recorded service, will be the last for a little while. I thank you for um, your participation, your prayers and your support. I plan to do... Um, live or recorded services, sorry, in the future when we have um, church festivals such as Christmas and Easter and other festival times of the year. Um, if you wish to contact me, please do, and I wish God's richest blessing to all of you. May you go in peace.